Jado is back at it here to give everyone another Locking Dead Season 1 episode review video. But before I continue with that, it's very important if you're not caught up to the point where I am in rewatching or watching The Walking Dead. So pay attention to the episode title. I'll put that in the description for you. If that's the case and you're not caught up, then I suggest that you don't watch this video any further simply to avoid any potential spoilers. I have rewatched The Walking Dead many times. It's been a long time since I watched Season 1 and so forth. And due to the fact that they've announced the conclusion of The Walking Dead, I wanted to rewatch the entire series over with. So, I must say, based on what I've seen so far, the performances from some characters are a lot stronger than I remember. Especially Shane, you know, John Bernthal, and Dale, Jeffrey DeMunn, and maybe even Jim, who hasn't really done that much yet, but he's, he's good. And uh, just really strong performances from the characters early on in The Walking Dead. It's a much different show now. But anyway, this will be The Walking Dead Season 1, Episode Number 3. The title of this episode is called Tell It to the Frogs. This will be my review, reaction, recap of the episode as Merle struggles to escape the handcuffs after his group abandon him on the Atlanta department store's rooftop. Swearing vengeance on... Deputy Sheriff Deputy Rick Grimes for putting him there. He starts to beg for God's forgiveness when walkers start trying to force open the rooftop door. Merle starts trying desperately to reach for some tools nearby, screaming that he will never beg to God again. Elsewhere, Glenn leads Rick and the other members of the group back to the survivors camp outside Atlanta. Rick is overwhelmed to find his wife, Lori, and son, Coral, among the survivors, along with his best friend and partner, Shane. As the group is reunited, they discover a walker nearby, which they quickly dispatch. They gang beat up that walker. That felt like police violence watching that scene. Uh, though, fear that may be a sign of trouble as they had yet to see walkers anywhere near the camp. Now, Merle's brother, Daryl, everybody's favorite character, Daryl, returns from hunting to learn of Merle's fate and becomes furious at Rick. Now, feeling guilty for leaving Merle handcuffed as well as wanting to retrieve his bag of guns, Rick arranges a rescue group, including Daryl. While Rick is gone, Lori tells Shane that Rick, that with Rick back, she must end her relationship with Shane. And with the, the group going back to Atlanta, it's going to be Rick, Daryl, of course, Glenn, because he's good at getting me into places quick, and good old T-Dog. I love T-Dog's character, by the way. He has another strong performance. But anyway, uh, with Rick gone, Lori tells Shane that Rick, with Rick back, that she must end her relationship with Shane, who then becomes bitter. When Shane witnesses Ed Pelletier striking his wife, Carol, it's our first appearance of Carol, for not focusing on the laundry for the group, he takes his anger out on Ed severely, and threatens to kill him if he ever touches any of the women in the group again. So that was a crazy scene. Shane just beat the shit out of Ed. And I remember him beating the shit out of Ed. But like, he beat the shit out of him. Uh, meanwhile, Rick's group arrives back to the department store in Atlanta. And make their way to the rooftop. Finding Merle apparently gone. However, they find a hacksaw sitting beside Merle's severed left hand with uh, within bloody handcuffs. Hanging from a pipe. Daryl goes into a fit of rage and screams as the others look on helplessly. So that's the end of the episode. I actually really liked this episode. I liked how Norman Reedus debuted on the show. He had a lot more emotion and a lot more expressiveness with his character. Where now he's just, all right, dog, where's dog? Carol, I'm going to do it. He's like, give me my thing. You know, he was just crazy. So I really liked Daryl's performance. I liked T-Dog's performance. I liked... Uh, Shane is awesome, and uh, Dale is doesn't have a lot to do, but the, he's just so like focused in his role. So as far as the score of this episode, I'm going to give it an 8.7 out of 10. So Merle cuts his hand off. The group goes back to find Merle and the guns, of course. So I, I, I enjoyed it. It was it was a very interesting filler, but interesting, intriguing episode. So you heard what I had to say. Now it's your turn. So. First of all, if you're a fan of The Walking Dead and you love this series 
and in 2010 your life changed because The Walking Dead started airing and then it became a weekly phenomenon while it was on for you to watch that show every Sunday night when it aired. Go ahead and smash that like button and if you don't like The Walking Dead and you wasted your time listening or watching this video, go ahead and hit the not like button. If you know anyone else that would be interested in listening or potentially watching this video, go ahead and share the video with them and let them know that they can share it with other Walking Dead fans, whether they're casual or super fans. Don't forget to leave me a comment about your thoughts pertaining to this episode, your character of the episode, your score of the episode, your favorite moment of the episode, anything you can think of, leave it in the comment section. And last but certainly not least, don't forget to hit that sub button, subscribe to this channel, join the team, show your support, and be a part of something special. And of course, you know that J-Dev will return.